What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I am joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, first off, got to tell the listeners, we promised beforehand, Nate would not be negative. At least I trying to promise that he maybe kind of tried to promise that for you guys. So we'll see how this goes for you guys. Good news, though, before we before we get you know to any of the fun stuff. Good news. You know, trade deadline. They made a couple trades. They were buyers. Angels were buyers, which is fun because they haven't been buyers in who knows how long. But before we get to that stuff, how you doing? Jordan Adams got called up. Let's go. Jordan Adams. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. I talked to his I talked to his parents right after having to, you know, had to throw out a congratulations to them. And just, you know, long time coming. Um, was it 2018, 2017 first rounder? Had it. 18. 18, 17? I don't know. I think 18 was Wilson. No, 18 was Wilson, 17. Oh, uh, man, yeah. 18 was Wilson. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, 17. But, yeah, congrats to Jordan Adams. That's I'm I'm just excited to see another guy like that up um, in general. You know, another first-rounder. And we'll see we'll, we'll see what he brings to the table. You know, um, obviously he hasn't turned into what he – what he could have been as a first rounder, but uh, you never know with the with the late blooming type of guys like that. Didn't play baseball full time until he got into pro ball, so um, that takes a little bit more time to adjust uh, than than most. So, but congratulations to Jordan Adams and the Adams family. Um, that's interesting, the Adams family. Huh? So, uh, yeah, see what I did there. Yeah, um, very good. Let's talk about it, right? Trade deadline. We'll have another podcast comes out tomorrow. Going over this Brave series as we're watching it now. Spencer Strider doing some. Spencer Strider type things to the Angels. I'm sure we'll we'll be able to discuss that then. Like I said, trade deadline just ended a couple hours ago. How you feeling about it? Um, yeah, you know what? They did what they said they were going to do. They they went for it with what they had, and you know they they got some quality pieces. I don't know if they got enough, but like they at least they tried. Like they said they were going to do things. They did things and. They, they got pieces, and honestly, yeah, there were some trades that I thought they lost, but in all honesty, like, you really have no idea how these prospects are even going to do. Like, we don't even know if Jeremiah Jackson will make the bigs. Like, we hope he does. He, he was a really, really cool guy, friend of the show, things like that. But, you know, does that guy even make the bigs? Who knows? Do you know Dominic Leon's going to pitch in the major leagues this year? Yes. So, I don't know. There There's some things like that where it's like, eh. Yeah, we might have gotten, we might have gave up a lot for that, but, and that that's not the only trade that I think that in, but it, when you say you're going all in, you have to go all in, yeah. and when you have a farm system that is rated as poorly as the Angels, and here's the other thing that I want people to think about too, it has nothing to do with what MLB.com rates them, it has nothing to do with what Baseball America rates them, it has nothing to do with what you and I rate them. Right, each organization rates other organizations. They look at a couple of things. They look at what have you done for me lately? Have you actually had guys come to the bigs? And when your guys have actually made it to the bigs lately, have they done anything? Um, I think you look at teams like the Yankees, the Yankees prospects, and guys that they are looking at. They haven't really gotten as much. They've had to give up a little bit more for guys lately, just because they haven't seen the uh, the talent come. And they haven't seen the guys make it to the bigs and and stick in the bigs as long as they they would have liked. So, I think that's one thing to to keep in mind when you're looking at some of these trades. Is it's like, yeah, the Angels farm system is bad, but or man, we gave up him and we thought he was going to be really good. But if we're giving up him for that guy, maybe he's not as good as we think he is. You know, so those are the things that you got to keep in mind when making when talking about this. Like, yeah, it's great to talk about, you know, the Angels are 27, 28, 29, 30th in, in prospects. But all that matters is what does the league think? Because that's Everybody's the only way to make a deal. It takes two to tango. You you can't just you can't Every, just call up the, the Cardinals yeah. and be like, hey, we want Jack Flaherty. This this is who we're giving. All right, cool. Like, no, it takes two teams. You. You gotta like somebody on that team. They gotta like guys on your team. So, with with what they had, I think they did a decent job. Uh, but I think they were they were they had a little bit of an uphill battle, and we're gonna see if it was enough. 
yeah, if it, first of all, to kind of like hit on hit on that before we kind of dive into like in, giving our grades and and talking about what the other teams in the AL West and wild card did. Um, I mean, you, you bring up a fantastic point, which is first off, teams value players differently, right? Like, so I, I posted that you know the Angels gave up Jeremiah Jackson, and it was all hell broke loose because Jeremiah Jackson. Um, again, you already mentioned it, friend of the show, Jeremiah Jackson, fantastic player, fantastic human being, fantastic family. With that being said, for me, he was my 20th ranked prospect in a not very good farm system anymore. Right. And not even in, and not in a very good farm system at all in, in, in general anyways. Um, so yes, everybody ranks players differently. Um, and everybody looks at players differently. You know, uh, Billy Epler might look at Jeremiah Jackson as a starting shortstop. You know, when the Angels were moving him around, he played some third base, played second, played short, played corner outfield. I think he got a little bit of center field in. So he was he was all over the place for the Angels, which was cool. You know, that's kind of how the Angels are building. Um, you, an, another good thing that came out of this, um, out of this trade deadline was they didn't have to give up the core that we've talked about that they've been building in a sense. They, uh, for the past, you know, couple years, they they didn't have to go in and give up a Logan Ohapi, a, a Zach Neto, a Chase Silseth, a, uh, a a Patrick Sandoval that we're watching pitch right now. Um, they they didn't have to go give up that core that they were building for next year. They gave up guys that, you know, uh, even dating back to like the Eduardo Escobar deal or the Mike Mustakas deal, like a, a Landon a Landon Marshall, a Coleman Crow, um, guys that sure might contribute down the road. Um, but next year and following years, I mean, next year and, and probably the year after that, probably aren't going to contribute too much, right? So, <laughs> yes, they gave up a guy like Edgar Caro, and yes, they gave up a guy like Kai Bush, you know, and, and we've talked about that trade already. But, I mean, how much were those guys really going to contribute? Like Kai, Kai Bush has been, had some issues with injuries this year. I'm sure he comes back and he probably ends up being – you know, a nice, a nice starting, a nice starting pitcher for the Chicago White Sox. Is he a starting pitcher on in, in this rotation this year? Like, if if you look at it, is he taking Tyler Anderson's spot? Like that, that's the that's the five spot right there. As it is, I probably would, I probably that's take like Tyler the, Anderson, right? That's like, like the seven spot, if you're really fair with yourself. Yeah. Because Edgar, Edgar Caro, another another example. Edgar Caro, Caro is probably blocked for a little while too. To be honest, he's not even ready. Yeah, he's, like, he's not ready, and he's not, blocked, not ready. He's so. With, with he's that another said, two years away. Yeah, you didn't get rid of the the core pieces that you're building for next year, and this is gonna the core pieces. Like if you guys hang around this podcast, um, you know, watch us and, and have watched us before. We've talked about it before. The core pieces for next year, and like how we were talking about trading Otani, the core pieces for next year still apply. You still have a nice core. Yes, you have a lot of free agents. You still have a pretty nice core that you you, you can build around there too. Um, so again for another podcast, but losing a lot of these guys doesn't, doesn't hurt you all that much. Yes. You're going to have to be active in the fruit in the free agent market come the off season and possibly the trade market. Um, but you're not hurt for next year. You're not hurt really for the long term either. you know, with this trade deadline. So with that being said, like I, I'm not horribly, not horribly upset with, with this. I'm excited that they're, that they're going all in. I think they could have gone a little bit more all in. If we want to talk about that, I think they should have gone a little bit more all in. Um, but with what they did, I mean, even dating back again to the Moustakis trade, to the Escobar trade, um, Giolito trade, and now and now to this uh, to this I can't remember his name, Dominic Leone, Dominic I believe Leone. is his name. Trade, you know, they they went and they got the pieces that were needed. Don't forget um, Cronin uh, Gritchick and, and Cronin Gritchick. They went and got the pieces that were needed, <clears throat> and they I know you hate this because we've talked about this off the record yeah you you don't you don't go for hey let's just yeah. fill some some holes and yeah. hope it works no you got to get guys and like yeah. that's that's my whole problem with this is like you didn't get the dude like giolito has been okay it hasn't been like elite you didn't have the pieces uh, to go get the dude though like we talked like dylan sees you didn't you didn't have the pieces to go get dylan sees you really well, you did. did but not not with <laughs> keeping competitive this year not with keeping competitive, not with keeping that core that we just talked about. Like yeah, to get Dylan, that's C, what I'm saying. You're like, giving up a Logan O'Hoppy. You're giving up a Zach Neto. You know, you're giving up a Chase Silseth, and that's not those aren't pieces. Reed I mean, Detmers. I think, Reed Detmers. You're, you're you're giving up a guy like that, and that's that's part of your core. Just one. You're probably giving up two of those guys that we just mentioned. yeah. So, like I said, 
at the end of the day, I'm cool with it. Um, and and even dating back to to the start of the trade deadline, the Moose trade, the Escobar trade, the Angels have gone and they and they've gotten what they've needed. Um, and God, Nate, there's a cop out answer, and I know you hate this. They need to get healthy really quickly. Like, oh yeah, they you you got to get healthy. And you, let's project. Yeah, that's what you can, the you can project all you want. I know, I know. It, you can project fun. all you want. It's I, fun on I, paper. I, but... It just pisses me off. It I does. Know. Like the game's not played on paper. Um, you, you, you can't, pro- you can't project injuries. How often have we heard from angels people? Uh, you know what? Anthony Rendell day to day, he'll be back in a day or two, four days later, dude, uh, actually six days later, dude gets put on the IL and he's out for two months. And you're like, that was day to day. Oh, um, yeah. Griffin can't Car- experiencing typical soreness. Like he'll be fine. IL appearance. Day day after, like I know you don't have to go on a rant. I know soreness. I like. I, I, don't I thought like, he was good. I don't like playing. I don't like playing the what if game. You, you can't play that game well. because what? If, so if you're going to put your entire season, this is an entire season. This is a franchise. This is a career for Perry Manassian on the line. This is not just like, hey, hope we make the playoffs. You know, this is a franchise career move. Like this is a franchise altering off. Um, trade deadline right now and you are going to put that on well i hope there are no setbacks with mike trout brandon jury logan ohoppy logan ohoppy hasn't played in four and a half months we're going to expect that guy to have no setbacks come back and be exactly what he was when we had him mike trout's coming off a hammy injury which is not a typical or not a great injury to come back from in the middle of the year because of the the wrist strength and and the hand strength and all the things that make it hard to hit. And we're going to say, not only is he going to be as good as he was, he's going to be better than he was. Um, and he's going to help carry us to the postseason, which I absolutely hope happens. But like, you're going to count on that when we can't even count on if a guy is going to be active because I, I'm honestly shocked that Zach now didn't go on the IL after, Hey, he's back. He's okay. He's back. He's Okay. Five days later, he hasn't played. That I that so, IL list is brutal right now. I mean, to be fair, it, it's just like you, it, it's a very, very brutal answer. I if that's the if that's what you hear out of management um, later today and tomorrow, I'm going to be very, very upset. So, I'd so, rather honestly, I would rather hear we tried to go get pieces, and we just didn't have what other teams were looking for. We couldn't give up a Zach Neto or a Logan Ohapi. Because those guys are too important to us. Fine. I agree with you. I 100% agree with you that we don't have enough to go get those, to go get one of those dudes. That's fine. But don't sell me on, oh, you know what? We're, we're really, we're actually really fine right now. Like, we, we just, we're bringing back some guys off the IL and this team's going to be elite. Like, like the uh, Rangers aren't bringing guys off the IL. The Astros aren't bringing guys off the IL. The Blue Jays aren't going to be bringing guys off the IL. The Rays aren't going to be bringing guys off the IL. Like, it, it's like people think we're the only team we're dealing with injuries. And I know we are one of the few teams that are dealing with the amount of injuries that we're dealing with. But some of the guys that we're counting dealing with injuries wouldn't even make some of these playoff rosters. Is that fair to say? Yes. And okay. also... I'm not going to try to sell you on this counterpoint. You have to kind of so good. I'm no, I know you brought this. Up. No, I, I know you're you're doing great at being positive, but your negative side came out. And yeah, I, I, I want to get back. Positive. I want to get back to being positive. So segment this out. Trade deadline here. The acquisitions that they made leading up to the trade deadline. For me, minus Giolito, were pieces to keep you competitive and keep you in in the race for now. And I know you just went over that whole thing of like. Dude, like everybody's going to have pieces coming back. You have to segment that. You have to stay competitive right now, right? Until you can find a way to somewhat get healthy or get better, right? Like you need to stay competitive right there. You need to find a way it, to but, work your way. But we're into going a into the toughest part of the schedule. Like if this was July schedule or and you June couldn't, schedule. And you, can't, and you can't go into the toughest part of your schedule with Andrew trying Velasquez. Trying to survive. Stop. Well, no, and that's what they were trying to do. It was trying to survive. You mm-hmm. made moves to survive. 
Not trying it, to survive. It now, still feels so like now we're treading water survive. here with what we did. You you are for sure. Like you're tra- you're you need to find a way like after these trades you need to find a way and like last like last little bit and i i absolutely hate to do this to you you're gonna hate you're gonna you're gonna do this aren't you i I am and so we're treading water in august like ah, you know what some guys are gonna get healthy we'll we'll hopefully hopefully we'll start to swim again the astros and the rangers just said here's the freaking life raft you're good we'll just go go for it justin Verlander, max scherzer whatever this team needs we are willing to do – yes, they have – and people will argue with you and say that the Astros have no prospects compared to the Angels, and you, I think the Angels are 29th now and the Astros are 30th, but we already talked about that. Um, they said we don't care. We're going to go get Justin Verlander because we know that our window is is small. And you can argue the Angels' window is not small, but when Shohei Otani is talking about leaving and it all – comes down to can you win baseball games i would say that window is very very small so those teams threw a freaking life raft in there and we said uh, keep treading water hopefully somebody else will come and save you later that's what it sounds like to me at the moment you you could you and you you have to agree with me here you could not say you were competing and put out a lineup that had andrew Velasquez two days ago had had Mike Stefanik, had Trey Cabbage. I know. And you cannot compete and put that out there. Right now, they're not putting that out there. That's funny. You have to stay. You have to stay afloat, right? You have to. Next move is now you've made these trades. First off, you have to show that you can beat good teams. So like watching this Atlanta series, like you got to now take two or three from Atlanta. You got to go into Seattle, take three or four. You got to show you can beat good teams. Especially with Seattle, just calling it quits. Exactly. Yeah. I know, Seattle just sold it off. So you, you now are expected to go in there and take three or four um, Come home at the very least. Four. Exactly. At the very least sweep, you need to show that you can beat competitive teams. And you also now need to find your way into a wild card spot and pushing the AL West right now to get to the AL West. The AL West got a lot better. That's scary. Way better. A lot better. That's that scares me. Um, doesn't mean you rule out. I know you're going to rule out the angels in the West. Doesn't mean you rule out the angels in the AL West because you never know what happens, right? Angels can get hot all of a sudden, right? You get healthy, you get hot, or you get hot, you start getting healthier, and all of a sudden it's like, well, the Angels have won 20 of 25, you know, and our, our 20 games over 500. It's like, wow, like how, how, how did that all of a sudden happen? You know, so segment it out, Nate, segment it out. You, you're I'm, floating. I'm, you need to figure out a way to to start beating good teams. Yeah, that's, now, that's then, the big one. Yeah, then you need to figure out a way to get into the playoffs. Right, into you're in the playoff picture. You need to find a way to get a playoff spot, right? And then yeah, and, and here, there's there's really so. only one team who didn't get better during this for during this trade deadline madness, and that's the Minnesota Twins. Everyone else got better from a from a trade deadline standpoint. Like everyone went out and did something. Oh, you could Blue, argue that I don't Cleveland think the Blue Jays got that much better. Who did they get? They got Paul DeYoung, and that's really it. Like the Twins didn't, didn't they make get Jordan trade. Hicks. Did they get Jordan Didn't Hanks they get too, Genesis so? Cabrera? No, oh, you got DFA. I'm not giving you that one. Why not? Because I'm not giving you Genesis Dude, Cabrera. Dude, was 98 with a slider. That's like, fine. He got DFA. Isn't he the I'm reason not... that we lost to the Blue Jays? I'm not giving... I... I know the umpires were. Uh... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're welcome. That's no. such okay. a stay on, stay on focus here. Work through your segments. It sounds like a lot, and it sounds like a lot to me, too, and I know it sounds like a lot to you. Work through your segments. Start on beating good teams. This, this, uh, this Atlanta Braves series is huge. Um, start working on beating good teams, get healthy, find yourself into a playoff spot. You never know what happens, right? At, at, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot to push for. Um, but you know, you, you now have made trades. You are buyers. You've made trades to be a competitor. You need to show that you can be a competitor. We already talked about it. We said it. We're moving on. Eight, more no more. Oh, Toronto had one more acquisition. Sorry. They, they activated Hunchin Ryu, so had to had to throw that in there for you. We're moving on. AL West got very, very good over, over the last couple of days. Max Scherzer are going to the Rangers. Austin Hedge is going to the Rangers. I know everybody's gonna be like, oh, Austin Hedge is whatever. Austin Hedge is going to the Rangers. Justin Verlander going to the Astros. The Mariners selling. The A's didn't actually make too many moves, which is kind of interesting. Granted, I'm sure there's not a lot of pieces that you really want to go get there, um, but the A's didn't make a lot of moves there. Um, and then the Angels making their making their big acquisitions as well got a lot better. 
definitely still need to be scared of the scared of the AL West in general. Um, definitely still need to be scared of the Rangers. You never know what's gonna they're gonna pull off there. Definitely still need to be scared of the Astros. They won the World Series. Don't sleep on the Kendall Graveman acquisition. That just really strengthens that bullpen for the Astros. And don't sleep on the Jordan Montgomery uh, trade for Texas. Like we have talked about that. That was my biggest thing with Texas going into the year. It was the reason I liked them the most. They had so much starting pitching depth that it was absurd. And they still went and got more starting pitching in the off in, in at the trade deadline. Still. Yes, Jacob DeGrom got hurt. And we, I mean, we, we could have seen that coming. We, we, probably saw that coming but Evaldi has pitched out of his mind John Gray has pitched well um, and they're like you know what let's just make sure that that we have it we win this thing we'll add Max Scherzer yeah Martin Perez hasn't pitched that good you know what let's just go get Jordan Montgomery to make sure that we don't have to throw Martin Perez and Andrew Heaney you know maybe we only have to start one of them and that's what they did and it's like Dean Dunning has pitched great out of the pen. He's actually been okay as a starter. As of late, he's starting to to not be as good. And it's like, you know what? Let's let's just be done with it. We'll go get a dude and we'll make sure that the Astros have to chase us. We're not chasing the Astros. And I, you have to give them hats off to both those clubs for just, you know what? We don't care about the money. We don't care about the prospects. We know that we need to win now. And I think the funny thing is, I think Texas's window is wide open. Like that window is open for like six years. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we have, were saying we were saying at the beginning of the season, like Texas yep. could either be really good, which we've seen them be really good, or they can be I mean, really bad in injury. So I thought they were, were going to be really good. Yeah. Um, um, re- regardless, the Astros and the Rangers made trades from to being a playoff team to now being a World Series contender. Yep. yep. Where the Angels are making a push to try to make the playoffs. So yep. you get a little step behind there um, for sure from the angels. And like I said, not ruling out the AL West angels can all of a sudden, you know, like I said, take they got nine points. games against those two teams. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, like I said, you never know what, what if the angels take nine, all nine of those games? I mean, crazier things have happened, right? You, you just and then lo- you never and know. lose the three to Oakland. <laughs> don't do that. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Don't be negative like that. So Nate, before no. we, before we let everybody go, you've had such a great podcast. I'm telling you, you've been, slightly positive you've you had to bring up 20- the you had to bring up the injury thing you you've given you've given me at least 25 percent of positivity which is fantastic from you tonight um it's almost as good as patrick sandoval's strike throwing ability tonight as well which, which is which is phenomenal um i'm glad you didn't like my joke there but before we let everybody go and i'd like to know from our listeners on youtube as well grade the angels oh. trade deadline yeah, and this is a cop out answer because it's fun, but it's I'll a B. So. Okay. It's a straight B. Um, not good enough to be an A because they you had to go fix something with the pitching. I, I don't care. If they would have gotten an absolute dude in the pen, like a Josh Hader, like a uh David Bednar, like somebody that is going to submit this bullpen, like that would have been fine because Patrick Sandoval, we've seen him in the World Baseball Classic. He could go five innings and be dominant in the postseason. Like, if he can bring that same atmosphere to a postseason start, like, it gives you a chance to win if that bullpen is deep enough. Or the other route you go is Lucas Giolito, probably not a two, honestly. And you can you can talk to me about it and say, you know, he's got 380 RA, whatever. He's probably a number three starter in the postseason. So you need somebody behind Shohei Otani. It's not Patrick Sandoval, not the way he's been pitching. You need a guy, and we talked about it last year. How did the Astros win? Everyone went six or seven. They turned it over to that ridiculous bullpen. And the seven, eight, nine, or the eight, nine guys said, night, night, game over. And that, that was the recipe for success for them. And you, there are two two ways to win a World Series. You have that way, and then you have the... Kansas City Royals when they won the World Series was everyone goes five and then the bullpen goes six, seven, eight, nine, and that's it. I guess the third way is you have three three really good starting pitchers and a fourth guy that is Patrick Sandoval, I guess. And those guys pitch all the innings. And then you have a closer. Kind of like the Washington Nationals did where it was uh, – Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin, and Anibal Sanchez, and Sanchez just kind of 
pitched out of his mind the postseason. But so that's what I would have liked to see. I would have liked to see them go get a guy where it was like, oh, that guy can make a postseason start. Like Giolito can make a postseason start, but the way I think about postseason starts, if we're playing Texas, Shohei Verlander, good one. Framber Giolito, we're dogs, right? Evaldi Giolito, we're dogs. Um, what about Gla- Giolito? Glasnow Giolito, we're dogs. Like you go through all of all these teams and like even the Minnesota Twins, it's like Sonny Gray's pitched well. He, he's probably a dog against uh, Otani, but then you go into game two and it's Pablo Lopez versus, you know, well, I mean, he is a dog going into that game. There you go. Um, Working on your positivity, man. Pablo I'm just, Lopez, I'm Pablo just Lopez saying, against Lucas Giolito, I think the Twins are dogs. Pablo, Pablo is the favorite. Giolito's the dog. I um, think it's pretty close there. It it is close, but they're and gonna have the home. Field. And if it's and that close, then it comes down to the the, the to the offense, and you probably got to take the Angels' offense there. Uh, not the offense we're running out there right now. No, but I'm saying like I'm just saying I'm not. Talking, I'm not playing. If you're talking not, playoffs, the Angels have got to be a little healthier. You you hope, you hope. Didn't we see two years ago where they said Mike Trout's only missing two weeks and he missed six months? All right, he's already taken swings. He's already taken swings. I I know, but I'm I just know. saying like you, you can't play that game until the guy actually is on the field. So, um, yeah, stop, that that's the that's the thing, and you're not going realistic. to be in a position to play the Minnesota Twins. So like you can't even really look at a Minnesota Twins series because you're going to have to be the number one wild card team to play the Minnesota Twins. But you could be playing Baltimore, and Baltimore, you you have a shot against Baltimore because they they don't really have that guy. But they went and got Jack Flaherty. If Jack Flaherty's there too, going up against um against Giolito, I I think Jack is favored. I really do. Right. Now he, now, I, now you're getting into the negative. You're getting into like the thirty. Has Jack not pitched negative. better than Lucas this year? They're very similar pitchers. They're very similar pitchers. And what team has seven? I, I think that's a good matchup, actually. Nate, well, you're forgetting one thing, though. You have to make it to the playoffs first, right? Don't talk about the playoffs. And, and uh, as pitchers, you know, we are very, very, you know, very superstitious. Don't talk about the playoffs until you're in the playoffs. It's like touching the Stanley Cup. If I'm going to flip the script there. So worry about getting to the playoffs. I'm saving you from being negative here as well. I'm worry just about. saying, like, you want to win. Like, we don't. Yes, we don't, in the back in the back of my head, it do, has been that it's like you didn't go get any anybody who was a playoff pitcher. You need to make if you're playoffs. if you're Perry or you're Artie, they don't do what they do for playoff bursts. Like it, it's the same argument we have with Dodger fans all the time. It's like win a World Series. Like congrats, you won a division. Nobody cares. Nobody's gonna remember that you won the division in 2021 if you didn't win the freaking World Series. Right? Nobody remembers second place. So we're not playing for second place. It's like the we're not playing for third or fourth, fifth place, whatever it is. So we're playing for World Series, especially in a year that is win or go home with Shohei Otani's uh legacy as an angel and possibly life as an angel on the line. Because if the if if the angels don't put a dent in this postseason, he's probably gone. So we're not playing for second place of hey, we made it to the best two out of three round and we lost. Like Nobody cares. Nobody's going to remember that the Angels made it to the best two out of three round and and lost, right? Like, I'm sure a lot of people don't even remember that the Marlins made the playoffs in 2020. Why? Because they lost. Nobody cares. We want to win World Series. Make sure you get a dude to win a World Series. That's what that's what I wanted to see. But I know they didn't have enough pieces. But it's a B. You know, like they got some pieces that are going to help them right now. And hopefully you get some guys back and it does does some good things. Uh, Drury's expected to be back on Thursday against Seattle, which would be huge if that's true. Um, Starting to rehab. hoppy has right been now. making progress, which is nice, but we don't know how much progress. Um, and just the starting pitching is going to have to step up. Even, even if this is the best the Angels can do, Patrick Sandoval and Reed Detmers need to find the bulldog in them and pitch like they did last year. That makes this team a lot more fun. If they're going to continue to pitch the way they've pitched this year, 
it, it's not going to get the job done. Say so Patrick Sandoval looks uh, looks looks pretty good tonight. He's keeping <laughs> that pitch back back pitch count back down, but he looks good. Um, I'm going to give it. You're not going to like it. I'm going to give it an A minus. I think they went out and. Oh my gosh! This is okay. like your stupid grade from off season two years ago when they. <laughs> Filled all the holes, but they all did. the guys sucked. They did. They went and they got like you got you had guys get hurt, right? You went out and you got Mustakis. You went out and who's been playing first base and playing pretty decent third base. You went out and you got Eduardo Escobar, right? You needed a starting pitcher. You went out and got the best starting pitcher that you could get, right? You weren't gonna get a seat. You weren't gonna get, you know, some other guys. Would it have been nice to get another guy? Sure. I wonder if they could have gotten Verlander if it was Sandoval and, and a prospect for Verlander, but I don't know if they would have wanted to do something like that with the money and all that, but I wonder if it was possible. Yeah, you went out and got the best pitcher that you could have gotten for for what awesome. you have in the farm system. You went out and got – you probably could have gotten some better relievers. That's that's kind of the make or break thing for me. However, I do like Ronaldo Lopez. I I, I do like him. I like you hard throwing. Well. I don't know, he's, he's, throwing the ball, he's throwing the ball very well. I like hard throwing um, bullpen guys. I think at the end of the day, that's what – what wins and loses playoff series. And again, you have to make it to the playoffs first, but what wins and loses playoff series is, is the bullpen and, you know, hard throwing guys in the bullpen. You don't see that soft tossing, you know, <laughs> those soft tossing lefties or the Jimmy Herbert, Herget type guys in the playoffs all that much. You see the guys throwing freaking gas. With right? a disgusting slider. Or exactly. A disgusting split. And you're in October. It's cold. Like it's, it's hitting in October is not a lot of fun. And, and I think at the end of the day, pitching comes down to, to, to winning October, take a step back though. You got to make it to October 1st. That's that, that, that's where you're at. With that being said, I think they, I think they made the moves to push to make it to October. You're not going to like this. They need to get friggin' healthy. Like I'm going to be keep saying that that's going to be my theme. Like that's going to be my key thing for the next two months until September, probably. You gotta. You need to get healthy. You cannot One continue month. to. Yeah, you you need to play healthy. You're gonna have to play through a couple some some injuries. You need to. You need your dudes on the field, right? And same thing goes with the bullpen too. And and, and we're gonna run out of time here in a second. Same thing goes with the bullpen. You have a chance to win a game. Go win a game. Don't no 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 more of this like oh uh, we're you know it, it's it, this guy pitched 15 pitches last night so we can't pitch no more of that you need to go win games you need to go find a way to win games um you need to find a way to 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 find to get to the playoffs right and anything happens in the playoffs so um Nate I know my yeah one last question for you is this team good enough to make the postseason right now yes or no right now with the with the schedule they have right now no. No, then you didn't do enough. Have, no. You can't give it an A. They didn't do enough. That's that's my opinion. If you if you would have said yes, this team's good enough to make it right now, I would have said change my answer to an A. It's great, but this they, team's not I good enough right now. Get, you didn't do enough. I, I think they need to get healthy. I think they need to they fig, they need to they need to figure out the rotation a little bit more. Um, I like guys pitching on the shorter rest, but um, yeah, no, I I agree. I think they did just enough to hang around. Um, I I think they did good if guys get healthy like i can i can i like asterisk the a like if no. guys get healthy it's an a you know it, i'm gonna say this until guys start getting healthy like grand jury's getting healthy um jose Marte pitched in what and if out rendon again. never gets healthy he hasn't been That's, on the field anyways you got moustakis you got uh you have guys it, to replace him it's not the way you're talking about it though you're saying that we're getting healthy and you that rendon's part of I, rendon is a big part of getting healthy like if rendon's he, healthy yes. and playing the way you want him to like that changes this entire lineup. I and so. I and I agree with that. I do agree with that. So, guys, with all that being said, please don't call Nate too negative. Would love to hear you guys' grades and know uh, and and know what you guys are feeling. Me. You were being negative. You're being a little bit negative here, and I don't. I like gave it. I feel it like I'm getting bullied. I feel like I'm how, getting bullied. How much? Bit, right? How much more positive could I give it without right. being unrealistic? All right. All right. No. No more realistic, Nate. And only negative, Nate. Um, guys, with all that being said, go ahead and follow us on all our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Go ahead and like this video if you are on YouTube. Uh, hit the subscribe button as well. You can follow us on all our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can follow myself on Twitter. X. Oh, it's not Twitter anymore. It's X, huh? I'm going to call X. it forever. X, 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 I, I had to. I had I to just for fun. You can follow myself on X at Jared underscore Tims. <laughs> Nate on X at Nate Green 34 Guys, thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.